Coming into shape, uh, doing more work uh, at the research desk. It is back to school, so that's kind of where we are. It is, I think, August 14th. It's about uh, 15 hours into the day. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. August 14th, 13th or 14th. This problem with the date erupts because I'm going to bed and waking up with me the same day, so I think another day has passed. But it really hasn't, it's just been one day, but I've you know, said gotten to bed and woken up and it's the same uh, calendar day. So I have to make that differentiating between the day I'm awake. Although, in the dreams, I'm pretty much aware of everything that's going on. Well, it's like being awake, but... Uh, the dreams are kind of interesting. I guess a, a large chunk of how you feel about things works itself, works itself out in a dream. In your dreams. And I think it's... I think everybody is kind of in a state of confusion, uh, not knowing where the next direction is. I think even this is even true of the so-called shadow government. And this is, this, is, this is what I need to point out. The shadow government isn't one thing. These are groups of people who not, don't always agree with them. And I've talked about this before, about uh, uh, looking at groups and being careful not to sort of realize not to say that everything is exactly the same. You can do you can make certain generalizations, but these things are just that, they're generalizations. Uh, the specifics are often unseen and they're very complicated and so you really can't uh, describe or talk about the specifics in any sort of significant degree. Uh, you have to spend an entire topic on it. In other words, you have to go deeper into the subject and uh, get more specific. But I, looking at the sort of things that are going on, the number of people who are coming up with pronouncements and statements are just, you know, quite, it's quite amazing, I think. And this is, again, Twitter. And it's these people who... And this is where a large chunk of the problem is. You can have a simple conversation, but then there's people who want to have, have themselves heard, but they don't really have anything, they can't, they have anything to say, will come in and they will make statements that are completely out of, rea out of tune with reality. It's like, what were you seeing? What were you reading? I mean, I read something completely different, and, you know, but this person was freaking out, but she didn't say specifically what she was freaking out about. Well, he should have known, and this and that. And, but if you, you read it, he wasn't saying anything. He said he let he said he let the article speak for itself. You read through the article, and the article is basically uh, saying what I had known all, all along about the autopsies, and that there's a lot of sort of interference with the autopsies. So the actual results of who's dying from the vaccine and who's actually dying from corona are two fundamentally different things. Of course, um, Andy Batcher stepped step, step up and said something about that. that, was, that, that that's exactly what they want to hear. Uh, as soon as the anti-vaxxer popped up, this other person, lady, popped up. 
backed up by this doctor so and so uh, and you look at her actual credentials and she's not actually because here's the thing when you say doctor most people think medical doctor but the thing is anyone with a PhD is simply a doctor and this is what she was she was simply a PhD with a doctoral thesis with a doctoral uh, degree uh, you know a philosopher the PhD is basically a philosopher's degree that's what, that's what the PhD, PhD is a philosopher and the D is the, the, the degree so PhD is a philosopher's degree that's all it is and this is where you call them doctor well, this person insisted that, that even though she was simply the philosopher, she would stand up and have, call herself doctor. But she, he, she inserted herself in a medical discussion. So this gives you an idea of the hubris of the behavior. And uh, this, this, is, this is where you can bring in affect and affectation as well. It's the things that occur, that the, a person's attitude, a person's behavior, a person's philosophy does to another person. So this is, the affect and affectation is something that is person to person. The effects uh, from person to person. So it's not a, it's something which is an inanimate object affected you. Uh, if it's a person, it affects you. And, it becomes more of a verb done by a person than uh, an inanimate object. An inanimate ob object. Getting tongue tied there. And these are the people that Lionel LeBron talks about. And the thing is, I don't say that the anti-vaxxers are correct, but the anti-vaxxers have their own particular issues. But I would say this, and I am going to say this later on on Twitter, that the behavior of the government has given anti-vaxxers uh, fuel for the fire, if you will. They, it provides them with a degree of truth. And then there's a, some, and she points, she, she pointed out to um, these so-called hypocriticals on uh, NIH's uh, website for doctors. But the the hypocriticals has been heavily changed. It's been heavily modified to the point where almost everything that the hypocritical actually stands for has been fundamentally removed. <laughs> So the hypocritical oath actually does reflect a lot, and this is where her own statement did this. Even though she wasn't intending this to be her statement, the, oh, the, the government always tells you the truth. That was her thing. Look at the government's own website. Well, he did. He saw something that heavily, heavily redacted, heavily modified. And when you go back and read the original, why was the stuff heavily modified? It was heavily modified because a large chunk of the, of the core of the uh, Hippocratic Oath, which is pretty true, is now considered to be offensive. <laughs> this has got to tell you where our medical system is today. And, and the ceiling is that people who are the anti vaxxers popped up around 1990 and anti-vaccine news popped up then. This is when a lot of the change in the beginning it was even noted in the, in the journal Science, uh, which I uh, was a member of, of the uh, association at the time. I left the association because article after article began popping up and stating that more and more articles, and this is what I saw, more and more articles were being written not as a research report, which was kind of dry and boring to go through and sort of pick up how the person did their research. You know, anyone who's done science in school has written a science report based on the experiment. And this is what it, that's what the journal Science is. This is it's basically these, these research reports. And they began to become heavily modified. It was. They were being written, this is what the article was sort of stating, it was called, that the, the articles would have to be 
forward looking and socially conscious. That doesn't mean anything because it's so subjective. So in other words, you take an objective science report, which is kind of dry and boring, to make it more interesting and palatable for your funder, you now have to make it look, you know, uh, forward looking and uh, socially conscious, which is basically what the board said. And so you can see that from the 1990s that they've been working to modify the sciences. And this is, this is uh, when uh, Bill Clinton came in. And it sort of seems to be to follow under Obama. Obama made further changes. Watering down the sciences and stuff like that. Adding extra layers of administration, extra layers of bureaucracy. I mean, the, one of the conferences I saw from the NIH, uh, there was maybe 100 people there. Only three were actually researchers, the rest were administration. They all had the title doctor, they, some of them had MD, but the, uh, only three were actually researchers. Check the date. It is August 14th. And again, it's that issue of going to bed and waking up on the same day. So it's just about 21 hours into the day, or thereabouts. Another only 5 10 minutes of that. about trying to think of things to say to continue our conversations. Ugh. Ugh. I think as we were getting, we are in some ways getting into Gnosis, and how Gnosis affects the rest of the world. And the thing is, is that people us, you know, will often assume that Gnosis is one thing, but it's not. You know, the, the so-called unitedness of the world is not really united. Uh, they just simply don't talk about details, uh, leaving that to other people. But the thing is that there are details that need to be discussed. But when they get into the nitty-gritty, that's, that's when you start seeing the differences and the, you know... Uh, but on the surface, everyone's sort of agreeing to be generic. So it's more of a generic existence than anything else. And this has an impact because uh, people like Lyle LeBron don't recognize the rules of Gnosis. going to believe that. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people, particularly in power, do believe that. It's always been there. It's not something that's new. It's not something that oh, well, we can dismiss easily because it's always been there. As with there with the kings and the queens, uh, uh, the entire structure of the European system is based on Gnosis. Now, I think it's the the notice is that it's, 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 it's,
is a generalized term. The left who insists that they are secular or humanists are not fundamentally secular nor are they humanists. They are on the Gnostic left. They just simply don't realize it. But if you look at a lot of what they're doing and who controls them, particularly if you look at what a philosopher like Hegel, Hegel was a Gnostic. Again, this is not uh, ever mentioned. No one brings the two things together. <laughs> you want to talk about aliens? You know, get into these conspiracy theories? Oh, there again, you're dealing with Gnosis again. The aliens have always been around in Gnosis. They're just not regularly talked about. There's a large chunk of the world of Gnosis is hidden. You're only supposed to know whatever your level is at. And nothing more. In other words, unless you are an Illuminati, or all along those levels, there are certain things you're not going to know about. Whether they're simply not going to be discussed. And you, you're, you're living within the Matrix. And the Matrix, and this is the Hegelian dialectic, and he was a Gnostic, creates the environment of conflict. It thrives off of con conflict because the result of conflict is what they view as progress. Progressives are people who believe, the true progressives, are the people who believe that in order for progress to occur, there needs to be a conflict between two different sides. The outcome, and then the conflict has to be violent. This is what's in Karl Marx, uh, you know, in terms of the communist revolution. Again, this is again, even though it's presented as humanism, it is indeed, uh, it is the uh, the uh, Gnostic left, where conflict has to be violent. People have to die. And from there, from this violent conflict, from this violent revolution, the results of the burning of the old society results in the progress of the new. In other words, in order to have progress for many of these people, you have to have conflict. These are needed things. So a large chunk of the conflicts that are going on now, you're seeing these minor skirmishes and conflicts. Well, these are all part of this is all part of Gnosis. And I think is that these are the sacrifices. These are, you know, part of the the homage paid to the various different gods. And so why is the Roman Catholic Church involved? Because the Roman Catholic Church from its inception in around 1000 AD was Gnostic. It simply had a Christian face. And so it used Christianity as its facade, where behind the scenes they were all Gnostics. This included the monks. So this is why Roman Catholic monks have their mistresses. They're not mistresses. Why are they, so why are the women there for? Those are, they're there for the Black Mass. The key to a Black Mass, any of these Black Mass are which call um, pizza gate or, or spirit cooking. The keys are in section in terms of the power is in the sexual magic. Ma something called sex magic. Sex magic of the magic uh, environments is the most powerful magic you can have. The person with the most power that you want to take our children, children have the most power. So if you want to have, a, you want to become a high-powered witch, you want to become a high-powered person with a lot of magical powers, then you're going to take it from children. Your children are going to be your feeding ground. And the more you degrade them sexually, the more power you have. This is the belief. This is not reality, but this is the belief. And so why do you see all this stuff going on. It's, you know, you know, 
Epstein and so on and so forth. Why does nobody care? Because they're all involved. In order to get their seat in power, they've had to sell their souls. And what's happening now is why no one's standing up, no one's sort of even sort of caring about what's going on is because the vault they know the, the they're all on the tape. They all sort of have given up the various things they believe in in order to have this power. And so you're in a situation now of not immorality, but amorality. Where there is no more morality, there is no more right or wrong. And this is kind of the result you have. And so what happens, where there's no direction, because there is no right and no wrong. And no one really knows where to go next. And so right now it's sort of, well, this is where you're going to have to, and I say, separate from society. You have to sort of back away from things. And in some cases, you say, well, we don't want, Lionel says, we don't want to move on. We don't want to leave our homes. We don't want to leave this. We don't want to leave that. Well, what do you think happened to people in Afghanistan? What do you think have happened to people in Syria? They had homes or Iraq. They had homes. All these other places. They all had homes. They had houses. They had lives. They had jobs. The wars came in and destroyed everything, forcing them to move. There's now a lot of large chunk of immigrants come to our country, and my grandparents were no exception, because the wars are going on in the area, and it destroys the economy. Why are people coming from South America? We want to stop illegal immigration. Illegal immigration. Good, good, great. How do you stop illegal immigration? Simple. Don't overthrow the governments. The illegal immigration that we're seeing now is occurring because we have overthrown the governments. And then the more we keep conflict going on in South America, in Mesoamerica, that's where Honduras and Mexico is, uh, the more we're going to have problems.